Welcome to Care to Watch. We are going to be reading some short stories by Roald Dahl, and today's story is The Three Little Pigs. The animal I really dig, above all others, is the pig. Pigs are noble, pigs are clever. Pigs are courteous, however. Now and then, to break this rule, one meets a pig who is a fool. What, for example, would you say if strolling through the woods one day, right there in front of you, you saw a pig who built his house of straw? The wolf who saw it licked his lips and said that pig has had his chips. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, by the hairs on my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. The little pig began to pray, but Wolfie blew his house away. He shouted, bacon, pork and ham. Oh, what a lucky wolf I am. And though he ate the, big, the pig quite fast, he carefully kept the tail till last. Wolf wandered on, a trifle bloated. Surprise, surprise, for soon he noted another little house for pigs, and this one had been built of twigs. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, by the hairs on my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. The wolf said, OK, here we go. He then began to blow and blow. The little pig began to squeal. He cried, oh, wolf, you've had one meal. Why can't we talk and make a deal? The wolf replied, not on your nelly, and soon the pig was in his belly. Two juicy pigs, the wolf cried, but I am still not satisfied. I know full well my tummy's bulging, but oh, how I adore indulging. So creeping quietly as a mouse, the wolf approached another house, a house which also had inside a little piggy trying to hide. But this one piggy, piggy number three, was bright and brainy as could be. No straw for him, no twigs or sticks. This little pig built his house of bricks. You'll never get me, the pig cried. I'll blow you down, the wolf replied. You'll need, pig said, a lot of puff. And I don't think you've got enough. The wolf huffed and puffed and blew and blew. The house stayed up as good as new. If I can't blow it down, wolf said, I'll have to blow it up instead. I'll come back in the dead of the night and blow it up with dynamite. Pig cried, you brute, I might have known. Then picking up the telephone, he dialed as quickly as he could the number of Red Riding Hood. Hello, she said, who's speaking, who? Oh, hello, Peggy, how do you do? Pig cried, I need your help, Miss Hood. Oh, help me, please, do you think you could? I'll try, of course, Mrs. Hood replied. What is on your mind? A wolf, Pig cried. I know you've dealt with wolves before, and now I've got one at my door. My darling pig, she said, my sweet, that's something really up my street. I've just began to wash my hair, but when it's dry, I'll be right there. A short while later, through the wood came striding brave Miss Riding Hood. The wolf stood there, his eyes ablaze and yellowish like mayonnaise. His teeth were sharp, his gums were raw, and spit was dripping from his jaw. Once more the maiden's eyelid flickers, she draws the pistol from her knickers. Once more she hits the vital spot and kills him with a single shot. Pig peeping through the window stood and yelled, Well done, Miss Riding Hood. Our piglet you must never trust, young ladies from the upper crust. For now, Miss Riding Hood, one notes, not only has two wolfskin coats, but when she goes from place to place, she has a pigskin travelling case. The end. <laughs> On Care to Watch today, we're going to read a story. And today's story is Goldilocks and the Three Bears by Roald Dahl. This famous wicked little tale should never have been put on sale. It is a mystery to me why loving parents cannot see that this is actually a book about a brazen little crook. Had I the chance, I wouldn't fail to clap young Goldilocks in jail. Now just imagine how you'd feel if you had cooked a lovely meal, delicious porridge, steaming hot, fresh coffee in the coffee pot, with maybe toast and marmalade, the table beautifully laid. One place for you, and one for Dad, another for your little lad. Then Dad cries, golly gosh, gee whiz, oh cripes, how hot this porridge is. Let's take a walk along the street until it's cool enough to eat. 
He adds, an early morning stroll is good for people on the whole. It makes your appetite improve. It also helps your bowels move. No proper wife would dare to question such a sensible suggestion. Above all, not at breakfast time, when men are seldom at their prime. No sooner are you down the road than Goldilocks, that little toad, that nosy, thieving little louse, comes sneaking in your empty house. She looks around. She quickly notes three bowls brimful of porridge oats. And while still standing on her feet, she grabs a spoon and starts to eat. I say again, how would you feel if you had made this lovely meal and some delinquent little tot broke in and gobbled up the lot? But wait, that's not the worst of it. Now comes the depressing bit. You are, of course, a house pride wife and all your happy married life you have collected lovely things like gilded cherubs wearing wings and furniture by Chippendale, bought at some famous auction sale. But your most special valued treasure, the piece that gives you endless pleasure, is one small children's dining chair, Elizabethan, very rare. It is in fact your joy and pride passed down to you on grandma's side. But Goldilocks, like many freaks, does not appreciate antiques. She doesn't care, she doesn't mind, and now she plonks her fat behind upon this dainty, precious chair. And crunch! It bursts beyond repair. A nice girl would at once exclaim, Oh dear! Oh heavens! What a shame! Not Goldilocks. She begins to swear. She bellows, What a lousy chair! and used one disgusting word that's luckily you've never heard. I dare not write it, even hint it. Nobody would ever print it. You'd think by now this little skunk would have the sense to do a bunk, but no, I very much regret she hasn't nearly finished yet. Deciding she would like a rest, she says, let's see which bed is best. Upstairs she goes and tries all three. Here comes the next catastrophe. Most educated people choose to rid themselves of socks and shoes before they clamber into bed. But Goldie didn't give a shred. Her filthy shoes were thick with grime and mud and mush and slush and slime. Worse still, upon the heel of one was something that a dog had done. I say once more, what would you think? If all this horrid dirt and stink was smeared upon your eider town by this revolting little clown. The famous story has no clues to show the girl removed her shoes. Oh, what a tale of crime on crime. Let's check it for a second time. Crime one, the prosecution's case. She breaks and enters someone's place. Crime two, the prosecutor notes, she steals a bowl of porridge oats. Crime three. She breaks a precious chair belonging to the baby bear. Crime four. She smears each spotless sheet with filthy messes from her feet. A judge would say without a blink, 10 years hard labor in the clink. But in the book, as you will see, the little beast gets off scot-free while tiny children near and far shout, goody good, hurrah, hurrah. Poor darling Goldilocks, they say. Thank goodness that she got away. Myself, I think I'd rather send young Goldie to a sticky end. Oh, daddy, cried the baby bear, my porridge gone, it isn't fair. Then go upstairs, the big bear said. Your porridge is upon the bed. But as it's inside Mademoiselle, You'll have to eat her up as well. <laughs>